Glad to have your company tonight and coming you straight from the heart of Africa, Kigali. My name is Sam Kalisa. To our edition, Kenyans topped as the 17th edition of the Kigali International Peace Marathon. While Rwandans did well in the half marathon, the race was attended by the First Lady of Rwanda, Her Excellency Jeanette Kagame, and her Kenyan counterpart, Her Excellency Margaret Akenyata. They also joined the race in the Run for Peace segment, which is served by, for amateur runners. Olive Nete kicks off tonight with this report. The Kigali International Peace Marathon is one of the most prestigious competitions in Rwanda. Aside from happening for the 17th time, the marathon was attended by various stars and also the first ladies of two countries in the region, the first lady of Rwanda, Her Excellency Janet Kagame, and her Kenyan counterpart, Her Excellency Margaret Kenyatta. To many, this is a symbol of how sports is valued in Rwanda and that it plays a role in reflecting the image of the country. Among the categories of the race done by professional runners include the marathon made of 41 kilometers. In the category of men and women, the first three places were won by Kenyans, where Wilfred Keegan won the gold medal in the men's category, while Margaret Agai won in the women's category. Some of the participants of the marathon from various countries of the region say they were well received and that the race generally went well. Like we Ugandans, like we come to this country and uh, we find press is like our home, we feel fine, uh, we communicate, we work together with others, so we feel fine. I'm a sportsman and uh, running this uh, event, the Kigali Marathon, it's good for me as uh, I will know the, good, the performance because it's a, a very good cause. So I will know myself how I perform and what uh, future am I adding to. Musabdezu Adeline Arandiz won the women's half marathon category, while Robert Kajuga finished as the third in the category of 21 kilometers in the men's category. They note that the good preparations made before the marathon is among the things that help them in the race. They also point out that they will keep on exercising so that they can improve. We thank the Rwandan Federation because it thought about us and took us to Musanze for a month so that we can be well prepared for the race. Winning today will assist me in the future competitions so that I can also do well in it. Truly seeing how our government is working, we believe that in a few days to come, we will be doing our best internationally. I'm going to prepare well. I rest in the 10 kilometer segment. That's where I will be focusing on because the Commonwealth is also about to happen and it requires to be well prepared. It is a great competition. The race also features a non professional segment of 10 kilometers called Run for Peace, where the runners are not intended to compete. Some of the participants testified that even though they are not professionals, they understand the importance of this kind of sports. <laughs> Doing sports is very good because it helps you to know the status of your health. When you regularly do sports, it helps you to take good care of your health by maintaining your weight and also fighting various diseases. You see, running is more of a universal language when it comes to sports. Anybody can run, you know, and it's both fun and exercise as well. So that's why I chose, you know, to participate in the running. How do you find Rwanda? Rwanda is nice. I mean, I love the roads. They are so good. And the weather is so cool, you know, to run. I mean, for the full marathon, so I've just done 21. I'm going another circle. Among the guests who participated in this race includes the well-known British long-distance runner, Mohamed Mukhtar Jama Farah, known as Sam Farah. He advises young athletes to work hard. Keep working hard, keep believing in yourself, keep working as a team, and one day you'll get there if you have that belief and that motivation. Um, but mainly I want to say to the, the government, thank you for having me in Rwanda. I really enjoyed my time and uh, I'm part of Visit Rwanda and Arsenal family, so it's nice to be as, as one. This annual competition is happening for the 17th time. It was attended by 3,000 athletes, including those from various countries and also those from the region. Olive Nete, RTV News. 
Thank you, Oli, for the report. And moving ahead, Rwanda's government has denied accusations leveled by the Democratic Republic of Congo that it is supporting the M23 rebel group in that country. The deputy spokesperson of the Rwanda's government has uh, stressed that the matter is a Congolese problem that the nationals of that country should resolve among themselves. Sergeant Hori has more. It has been a few days since the accusations were leveled and they have been categorically refuted. The fact that that country, with how big it is, has a part that includes Congolese nationals that speak in Rwanda, does not mean that every time a problem arises they should be categorized as being part of Rwanda or people that Rwanda supports in some way. Let that be understood. If M23 that belongs to that area has issues with the government of the DRC over the treatment of people there, then those issues should be addressed and resolved. Therefore, every time a problem arises, they should not start claiming that Rwanda is behind it, saying we have sent personnel and equipment there. The fact is that Congo's military attacked its own citizens and was repelled, which is probably why it thinks they had some sort of help in doing so. They do not understand how they were repelled without the help of some hidden force. The deputy spokesperson also pointed out that the DRC in its accusations, in addition to them being totally false, cannot even be specific about them. What sort of support are they talking about? They say Rwanda is supporting the M23 rebel group, and that's it. They are just keeping people in the dark. If they are claiming support is being provided, they should show it. Is it bullets, tanks or soldiers? Is it medicine or food supplies? Many things are needed during war. Now, on the other hand, Rwanda says its soldiers were kidnapped. Let us look at how that could have been done. Take two Rwandan soldiers fully armed, wearing their military uniform and carrying their Rwandan ID cards and military cards. Would they, being sane people, infiltrate 20 kilometers into another country? Where would they be going and to do what exactly, when there are only two? Think about it. What could two people possibly hope to achieve by doing that? Even if there were some sort of commandos, like the ones we used to watch in films like Rambo, what would they be thinking by infiltrating another country, being just two? Then there is the matter of the more than 140 armed groups in the DRC, one of them being the FDLR, that is comprised of perpetrators that left Rwanda after committing unspeakable atrocities in 1994 during the genocide against the Tutsi and have since continued to try and cause insecurity in Rwanda while destabilizing security in the eastern DRC. What has the government of the DRC done to rid itself of the FDLR in the eastern part of its country so that they can stop being a security problem to the Congolese and neighboring countries? All they do is look for a scapegoat every time a problem arises. I honestly do not want to broaden this problem further, but I think other countries may be influencing it. When we do an analysis of the problem in the eastern DRC and look at the way all of those armed groups just coexist with the government forces as well as the UN troops there with no problems, we tend to notice that issues arise only when M23 reminds people that there are agreements that were signed and not respected. Of course, there is also the issue of the DRC deliberately firing into Rwandan territory. Had Rwanda been beating its war drums, do you really think we would have been fired upon first in March and then in May and not responded? It doesn't mean that we do not have the capabilities to fire back. On the Rwandan side, we do not want to fight, and instead we have been working to resolve these problems using broad and narrow means so that a long-lasting solution can be found. We have noted, however, that at times the other side's government is dragging its feet about it. It doesn't mean, however, that we must be discouraged by that attitude. Because of the problems in the eastern DRC, transportation between Rwanda and that country has been disrupted, including the recent halt of Rwanda flights to destinations in the DRC. 
And now moving ahead to environmental matters. As Rwanda prepares to join the world in celebrating the World Environment Day, some residents of Kigali City say that environmental protection has become a culture and that it is beneficial to everyone. Olive Nete has more. These residents say that they used to conserve the environment as an act of respecting the law. But now that they are aware of the importance found in environmental protection, they now do it as a responsibility, starting from the community work, as well as doing it in their homes. The reason why we have made it a culture, nobody walks barefoot on the streets. Before, we used to see wastes of candies and sugar cane on the streets and other things, but now the streets are clean. We even have uh, companies in charge of cleaning roads. Conservation of the environment is in our best interest because it allows us to breathe a fresh air free from smoke, car fumes and ETC. Another benefit is that it allows us to get rain and even tourists come freely. This helps us too. The World Environment Day will be celebrated on the 5th of June with the theme, We Have Only One Earth. Let's take care of it. In Rwanda, this day will be celebrated on the 3rd of June, preceded by a week with various activities highlighting Rwanda's progress in environmental protection, current challenges, strategies to continue moving forward, and also continue working with other countries in the struggle of conserving the environment. As Foster Munyazikuye, the Deputy Director General of Rwanda Environment Management Authority, explains. Yesterday, in collaboration with Minalok, we started with a community work known as Umuganda, and we also gave a message about environment conservation. On the 30th, we will conduct discussions about what was highlighted in the reports, especially the report on the current image of the environment that is usually done after four years and it will be presented before the parliament. That is why we wish to present the contests of the report to Rwandans in that week. This will be the sixth time to present this report. On the 31st, we will meet in the University of Rwanda, Huye campus, with students and lecturers from various universities. We will have in-depth discussions about the contests of the sixth report of the current image of the environment in Rwanda, and we'll also talk about the report we do on air pollutants. And as the country, we have a duty to do that report. We submit it in the International Agreement on Climate Change, which is done every two years, so that students, teachers and researchers can use these reports to conduct research so as to cooperate with the government. This week dedicated to the environmental protection will also include activities of mining and other related activities that aim at sensitizing those who work in that sector to avoid distracting the environment and help soil to reconstitute and plant trees appropriately. Olive Nete, RTV News. Uh, of environmental matters, environmental experts say the management of electronic equipment is a major issue as the only company that buys and collects out of use and old equipment to recycle them and uh, receives only 30% of those equipment per year in the country. We do more. Sanzi Shuti Leonard sells mobile phones. He is wondering where these gadgets go when they are no longer in use as they are used in large numbers. New equipment are imported every day, but you cannot tell where the old ones go. I sell electronic equipment, but for example, when I exchange a new battery for an old one, I put it in other wastes, and I always wonder if it cannot cause any effects, because there is no specific place to dump such wastes. According to the International Union of Telecommunication, ITU, Rwanda is one of the 13 African countries that has electronic waste management system in place. Other countries include Egypt, Ghana, Madagascar, Nigeria, South Africa, Cameroon and Ivory Coast. In the Wijasera district of the eastern province of Rwanda, a plant named EnviroNserve has been set up and aims to recycle between 7,000 and 10,000 tons of old 
technology equipment per year. However, that is only 30% of all technology equipment out of use. Severa Steve, a communications officer at the industry, says what they are doing to get even the remaining 70% of this equipment. The, the first thing to do is to uh, increase, um, raise uh, awareness, and uh, we've done that, and we are planning to keep doing that. We've, um, we give workshops to public institutions, to people who are in charge of asset disposal, to private institutions, to informal technicians, because these are the ones that will deal with these equipment on daily basis. So we equ equip them with the knowledge, we equip, we equip them with um, with what's on at risks uh, when they deal with these uh, materials. We, we give them knowledge, equipment. We, we, we even teach them how to do this in a safe way. You know, how to, what you need to have as an equipment, what you need to have gloves, helmets and stuff. So we are doing, we are raising our awareness and um, if all goes well, because due to COVID, um, we had some awareness plan that were cancelled. But if all goes well this year, we will um, do more. Uh, and I think um, we hope it will change and uh, increase uh, the number of people that bring in the, the e-waste. Environmental analysts say that Rwanda is well positioned in terms of banning the use of plastics and polythene bags, something that the country in April this year pushed for to all UN member states. Charles Karangwa, an environmental expert and country representative of the International Union for Conservation and Natural Resources, IUCN, noted that the efforts used in burning the use of plastic bags can as well be used to enhance the recycling of old electronic equipment. Investing in technology uh, comes with a cost in terms of managing the waste uh, from, from, from different uh, uh, instruments, material, from telephones to computers to other electronics. And of course, um, that cost, uh, I think it, it's also part of what the government committed to as part of the national determined contributions in terms of climate change, uh, because there is a strong component that we did be looking at e-waste management and, and there's a number of initiatives already that the government have started and uh, as it wound and of course I, I feel we still need to invest a lot in that because the huge efforts may be put into um, institutional e-waste management collecting electronic waste from organizations institutions uh, but we need to think beyond that what happens at household level all households in Rwanda, or at least most of them, have have smartphone or, or or at least a phone. And sometimes we wonder what happens when that phone gets to be disposed. Where does it go? And that's where actually the waste needs to be really uh, collected. A report by the Global e West Monitor in 2019 indicated that in that year there were more than 54 million tons of electronic wastes, but less than 10 million tons were recycled. According to the report, if no action taken by 2030, the amount of electronic wastes will reach more than 74 million tons. RPF in Hotanyi members in Kamonyi districts of uh, the southern province of Rwanda have uh, been reminded that what the chairman of the party at national level promised has uh, to do with uh, their day-to-day -day responsibilities. During a meeting on Sunday, the members were urged to increase their efforts with, when it comes to improving the social welfare of citizens. The RPF party is looking to attain key milestones by 2024 when it comes to improving social welfare countrywide, especially water and electricity distribution, and members in Kamonyi district have vowed not to fall behind in this drive. We are assessing how far we have come, looking at the party's manifesto and what has been achieved, as well as what is still pending. We are looking at where more effort needs to be put, sensitization efforts that RPF members need to participate in, especially leaders, when they understand the urgency. Things pick up. That goes in line with what His Excellency, the President of the Republic, promised Rwandans, building up capacity at the family level with sufficient security and various services like health, as well as having access to infrastructure. Uh, 
The party's members understand that not all of the goals to be attained require hefty budgets and much can and should be done at the local level. We are focusing on working together at the settlement level, in neighborhoods, and at the cell level. If everybody does what they are supposed to, there is no doubt that we can attain our goals in the next two years, everything the president promised the people. Concerning the implementation of projects meant to benefit the people, we must play our part so that by 2024 everything the President of the Republic promised people is achieved. Some things local communities must do, such as digging trenches to channel water and the construction of local roads. And as for projects that require big budgets, that is when the government steps in. As part of our efforts to keep up and the goals we have set for ourselves, like I told you, we are consolidating efforts, determining what is needed to get things done. If it is a bridge that needs to be constructed, what can we do? Certainly there are some things that communities cannot do on their own, but there are things we can do, using our development partners, opinion leaders and members of the private sector. They can help us build that bridge without waiting for more assistance. That can apply for energy distribution as well, with the reg required to do some things and us doing others. I am therefore confident that in the next two years we can do what we need to, so that we do not disappoint the President of the Republic. The RPF members were also urged not to become complacent in this latest push to get things done. The reason we stress that complacency cannot be an excuse is because when a person becomes complacent in the things that matter, it means their attention has been drawn to things that are not important. That is the reason a person cannot use complacency as an excuse when goals are not attained. The members also visited the construction site of a building belonging to the party in Kamuni that once complete is expected to help improve service delivery and trade in the area. On behalf of the entire news and technical team that made it happen, many thanks for being with us on this particular edition of Rwanda Television News. And whatever we filed for you throughout the week, and uh, enjoy the rest of our programs. My name remains Sam Kalisa. Stay safe and have a fruitful week ahead. Goodbye.